Hi everybody, it's Christine Bertram and I am coming to you live from the Hive here in Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. We are going to have another mystery card making night tonight, you guys. It's uh, January 16th, I think, all day long. <laughs> and Deb Norman has a reminder out there, you guys. Remember to hit the thumbs up button. Yay! And speaking of that, <laughs> I think I left my phone charging over there. So one moment, please, while I go grab my phone. <laughs> so hang on. Yes, I did, right there. I'm like, I know it's around here somewhere, you guys. And it's like, it was almost dead. And I thought, oh, I better charge it until the last minute. Hi, Lisa Webley. Hi, Donna Simmer. Hi, Rose Coleman. Hi, Judy Bobo. Hi, Susan Murphy. Wow, you guys are all rocking and rolling right in. Hi, Barbara Rudolph and Mary Lemke. Mary, did you finally get yourself dug out from your snowstorm last week? <laughs> Hi, Sue Anderson. Hi, Becky Rohrer. Hi, Betty Pyle. And there's Susie Stocks. Woohoo! Hi, Ann Bellinger and Mary Hartman. Carol Alanis is here with all of her purple love from Texas. Yay! Hi, Lynn Beasley and Susan Bellamy. Hi, Cindy Hutchings. Wow, it feels like all you guys, I was just spending a lot of time with you this weekend already. Hi, Feline Mays. Hi, Cindy Runtree and Mary Jean and Corinne. Wow, you guys, everybody was rocking and rolling in here so quickly. Hi, Linda Hodge. Hi, Bonnie Cummin. Bonnie, I saw your uh, text message. Yes, we can definitely connect after I'm done with Mystery Car Night. Wow, my shirt is a very big scoop, you guys. I didn't realize how scoopy it was. <laughs> Hi, Mary Shriver. <laughs> oh, man. Hi, Pierre Anderson. Hi, Sherry Martin. There's Debbie Schultz as well. And Karen Westine. Hi, long time no see. Hi, Randy Schultz. Hi, Linda Custer. Hi, Jamie Shipman. Who, you guys? We pulled it off. <laughs> we pulled off another winner creative escape. <laughs> oh, it's in the books. The fourth one. <laughs> Hi, Julie Frost. Hi, Susan Rich. Hi, Gwen Simmons. You guys, it was great. It was uh, very rewarding and awesome to be able to spend the last four days with so many demonstrators. We had 96 people, 96 demonstrators. Hi, Jay Shante. Hi, Doris Munson. Hi, Christina Tom Tulson. <laughs> Make sure I said that right. Oh, man. We had 96 demonstrators that signed up for this event, you guys. And it's amazing how much time and energy and preparations you can make for an event. And then in the blink of an eye, it's almost, it was done. And within an hour and a half, the entire place was turned back around to what the hive normally is, a garage and a mudroom. <laughs> and Anne said the escape was awesome. Hi, Loris from Wisconsin. You got in. Woohoo. So hi, Maria Stewart. Hi, Barbara Gobby. Hi, Sherry Maine. Hi, Paula Rice. Um, yes, 81 people. I got to hit my thumbs up too, Deb, now that I got my phone in my hand. Whew, you guys. It was quite the event. Um, lots of what I call it is the labor of love. And uh, there's a lot of love that's poured into this event. And I believe that the people that attended this event felt that and came out of it with their cups fuller. So yay. Hi, Dawn Ablett. Thank you so much. So this is a private event that I do for demonstrators. And private meaning it's only for those who register. We had nine creative presentations throughout four days nine cards for the make and takes plus a 3d project we had a like nine amazing actually there was 10 amazing displays all photographed i think there were over 70 swap cards and then on top of it for the event plus i had about 150 swap cards that i had from my personal swapping that i did um yeah so hi donna gruski um judy sharp hi i just finished your explosion box woo she okay so you guys I will show you a couple little samples of stuff just to show you guys what we did. They, Julie Bierschbach did a presentation on the explosion box. You've been probably seeing that on the, the World Wide Web. <laughs> and uh, um, it just, it was fun to see somebody actually make it. And so Julie Bierschbach took that challenge. Um, what, um, very rainy. Gwen said it's very rainy in California. Yes, lots of rain, you guys. Hi, Marsha Long. So, oh man, let me pull these projects, you guys. We're gonna give everybody a few minutes to kind of roll in. I'm gonna flip my phone down so you guys can see some pieces. But let's see, I have these boxes right here. Oh. So what 
just a side um, side quest for a moment, you guys, while people come in. Um, hi, Linda Hall. She had a fun weekend. Hi, Hilda Nell. So Julie Bierschbach, I gave her a challenge. <laughs> I did not voluntold her. I gave her an option. She could have said no, but she didn't. So I'm very happy for that. I had gotten these two boxes, one from Anna Rebidoux and one from Pamela Leahy. And I thought they were the coolest little things. And so uh, Julie did a presentation for our group that made she made one of these live with us. And then she had these other ones of samples. And so it's an exploding box like this, you guys. So it's super cool. So it opens up like that. And then there's little chocolates inside of them. And so she showed us how to make that. And then Diane Bogenhagen showed us how to use the new masks that are in the mini catalog. So she went through and demonstrated how to use the masks and then how to incorporate the shimmer paste with it. And she had some different samples. So just a sneaky peek, you guys. So those that are that are in the, the event, make sure you go back and watch those presentations. Uh, we, we put a lot of a lot of thought into what we should present on. Hi, Latokia from South Carolina. Um, we put a lot of thought into the presentations. Uh, uh, Carissa showed the envelope uh, book, that like the 3D envelope book. Uh, Jay Shante did her star book. And um, Diane, Julie, oh, and Gina Bulow. She did an amazing presentation on all the ways that you can use embossing powder and heating, like for heat embossing. It was amazing. So I challenge those that are in the Facebook, private Facebook group, go back and watch those videos. Those creative presentations are amazing. Um, it's so much fun. And then you guys get one more private class with me next week, Tuesday, the 26th. Uh, if you, um, that's not the right side. I keep <laughs> putting that right. Um, if somebody reminds me when we're done with Mystery Car Night, I'm going to take you guys around the hive and show you what's going on. I, hi, Luann Johnson. I was very blessed this weekend to have somebody who I met for the first time who joined my team on Thursday, January 5th, who signed up to come to the escape. And she drove five and a half hours. Carmen Sanders um, came up and she spent the entire weekend here with me. Hi, Deanna Stell. I was like, I don't know if some prayers were answered or what it was, but I didn't know how I was going to pull everything out of everywhere, you know, come out of thin air. But I had the escape that was going on for four days, and I had it on the docket that we were going to kit up Country Floral today and the technique class that I'm doing with Rose Coleman. And, um, and uh, there's 60 for Country Floral times four, and then Rose's class, I had 12 sign up times three, and all that needed to get kitted and cut. And so, so Carmen attended the escape on Saturday. Uh, she drove up Friday night, well, Friday during the day, and then she stayed for the shoebox swap on Friday night and hung out with us. And then she she stayed for the event on Saturday, and then instead of going home like she was planning to do, she asked if I needed help. And I'm like, I do. I need lots of help. And she loves to cut paper, and she loves the sixteenths of an inches. And well, she doesn't love them. I'm sure she doesn't mind them. And she's like, I can cut paper for you. And I'm like. Oh, so she sat next to me during the escape, you guys, and she helped me cut all the paper that I needed for kidding up today. And I don't know. And then she stayed last night <laughs> and we, she stayed all day today, basically and left about three hours ago. Oh man. So between her and my mom, we got country floral all kitted up. So I'm so excited for that. And then we got roses class, almost half kitted up. And then on top of it, you guys, I'm a glutton for punishment. I had a private class in here with seven people at 4 p.m. And that took until six, and then we rocked right into Mystery Car Night, and here we are. But I just had to give a call out to, you know, especially Carmen for this weekend to help me get prepared, you guys. I can't do things by myself. I could never make all the magic happen by myself. And all my helpers that, like, Anna and Tammy and Rhonda and Karen Wetstein and Karen Beekle, they were my primary die cutters and embossers. And they, Chris Dudaranke, Judy Immel, and... Um, Jill Butzine, Annette Rollin, you guys are all amazing. They helped make the event come to life this past week. And I can't, I can't do what I do, which is um, sharing and inspiring you guys and bringing community to each other, like bringing us to each other, uh, making friendships. That's what I love about this. And you have my helpers help me make that possible. So I just, I can't say enough for the people that help me make this all happen too. Yeah, so I'm so excited. But I think we've given everybody a lot of time to get into this mystery car night. You guys, tonight is mystery car night. 
And with all that happened <laughs> over the last few days, I, uh, I had to make an executive decision to, um, yeah, Carmen's not watching now, you guys, um, but when Carmen, yeah, Deb, Carmen is going to be watching this. She even said to me before she left, she's like, I won't be able to watch you tonight. I'm like, but you'll be able to watch the replay, Carmen. And oh, you guys, she was a doll, like amazing. And she stayed up with Tyler and me last night and chatting until about midnight or 1230. And um, she was so adorable. She was sitting on the couch, just relaxing. And my two cats, well, our two cats, Tyler and my cats, Tigger and Honey, just like flocked to her. Honey was like nesting up on her neck and Tigger was camped out on her lap. And it was just so adorable. And she was just giving them lots of love. So yes. So that was cool. Hi, Marie Lamberg from Livonia, Michigan. Oh my gosh, Marie. You guys, I didn't turn my ringer off here, apparently. Marie, I also know um, if you, Becky Gandolfo is from Livonia, Michigan. So you have a fellow crafter in your area. Um, so that's awesome. I don't know if you guys know each other, but that would be awesome if you did. <laughs> oh, so yes. Oh, it takes a lot to make the magic happen, you guys. But we did it. So I think we bought enough people time to get into the mystery card night. Uh, I had to switch the mystery card night. You night know, it's normally six o'clock. Usually, when I do nighttime lives, they're usually at six. But because I, um, <laughs> I had one of my friends reach out to me, and she asked if I would do a private class for her and her colleagues uh, to do a team building exercise, and they chose to do a card making class with me. And so they had to wait till the end of the work day. And uh, they were originally going to come at 4.30, but I asked if they could come at 4. So at 4 o'clock, I had seven people in here, and we were making cards. And they had a great time and then uh, uh, kitted up all day. And so what I'm trying to get to, you guys, I made an executive decision today that I didn't write the PowerPoint presentation like I normally do. So this is going to be a little bit weird for me and for you guys, but not, um, not anything too crazy. Um, did I get good rest? So Catherine, I am exhausted. <laughs> I will be honest with you guys. It may not sound like it or look like it right now because usually when I'm with you guys, I get my like lots of energy, uh, but I'm beat. <laughs> my feet hurt and I'm ready to relax. And I thought tonight after this live, I hope Tyler gets home here and we, he makes a fire in the, we call it the stout room, which is a, has a wood burning fireplace. And I just wanted to like think about nothing <laughs> except for the heat of the fire. But other than that, I'm feeling great. Um, it's just a lot, you know, going into it. And, but I knew that. And, um, so I didn't have enough time, you guys, to make the PowerPoint presentation. So, um, by the crotch of the thumb. I love it. By the crotch of the thumb. We all have a crotch of our thumb, right? <laughs> Um, so for those of that are new to me, this is a, going to be a, a, a different kind of, it might be not different for you because you don't know different, but for those that have done mystery night, we are going to make up our clues as we go. So it was about three o'clock and I said to my mom, ah, do I take a half hour, but it's never a half hour because I'm here with people working to write the tutorial. And then my mom would have ran over to where I get the copies made and it was just a 15 minute drive and she would have driven back and dropped off the tutorial. And I said, Carmen, mom, can the ladies survive without having the tutorial? And they both like thought about it and they're like, yep, you know, you know what? Don't take the hour to write it and might saves my mom a half hour of driving time and the copies getting printed. And so you guys, we're going to do ad hoc clues. Okay. I do have my pieces ready. So like, we're going to walk through the pieces like we normally do, but we're going to make up the clues as we go. <laughs> so for those that have, haven't watched me before, normally I have a tutorial with each clue and what to do on each clue, but Deb said I explained everything so well. It'll be great, right? So we are going to kind of fly by the seat of our pants, girls <laughs> and boys. So, but the first clue is written. So I'm going to pull the first clue up on my phone so we can walk through it together. Hi, Linda Grady. Linda's not far from Livonia too. Great stamp store near there. Awesome. Oh, are we ready? I think we might be ready, you guys. So just for those that are new, this is a fun stamping experience for you. This is for you. I do this night as a, a way for you to use your supplies. We all, I shouldn't say all, all is a lot, right? All is all of, is everything, right? So I should say um, um, we generally have lots of things at home if we are crafters or stampers 
And um, so Judy Bobo he likes this clues. Yeah, I'm not, this is not how I'm gonna do it going forward. This is just an ad hoc. This is one time in two years that I haven't done the clues, right? <laughs> so we're gonna fly by the side of, seat of our pants tonight, but this isn't Judy, so just know this is not normal. We're gonna go back to having clues in the future, I promise you. So, um, so this is your night to have fun. Don't stress. Um, follow along as best you can. Know that we're live now, but you can catch the replay later. So like, let's say you get stumped or you get stuck and you're like, I don't know what to do. Well, follow along for the rest of the presentation and then go back and you can always watch it again during the replay. And at that time, I always tell people, you can stop me, shut me up, start me, pause me, turn me off. You can do whatever you want to me. <laughs> so, um, so, so just have fun for tonight. Use the things that you have. I'm a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. So if you're new to me and you don't know that and you're looking for a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I would love to earn your loyalty. Um, I work very hard at classes and designing and I love sharing that with others. Uh, so just always reach out if you have any questions. When I drop my camera down, you're going to be able to see my information um, very easily and you can reach out to me if you need anything. So this is a, a class that I do at like like no charge. Like you guys, if there's spammers that are floating around in here, you know, don't click on anything. Hi, Pat Detlipson. Um, don't click on anything that like you should not have to pay for anything. Hi, Mitzi Stanley. Yay. I'm so happy you're here. You have missed my lives and now hopefully you can start watching them again. Um, so you guys, this is nothing in here is charged for. So if you see any spammer or trolls in here, just ignore them or just remove them from your um, messaging or from the comments. Um, if anybody else wants to add any, so those people that are seasoned and want to add any advice for a newbie that's watching for the first time, make sure you add some um, good, hi Maria Gilbertson, make sure you add some good comments in here to like help people along. Um, so, and, and ask questions. I don't always see absolutely every comment because sometimes they fly in very fast, but um, somebody else who's watching might be able to help me answer the question too. Um, hi Shirley Malarkey, you are not that late because we're just getting started. Um, and the main thing is you guys don't stress, have fun tonight. This is your night away from, well, no, I shouldn't say night. This is your hour or next 40 minutes is your time away from whatever it is <laughs> that you were working on or that was stressing you out. Like take a deep breath and let's make a beautiful card, right? Uh, there's no right or wrong way. What I'm telling you and starting you off with are guidelines for you just to make an awesome card. So, all right, let's find, um, <clears throat> let's find Clue number one. Hi, Carrie from Illinois. The first time watching. Well, Carrie, you're in for a treat. I hope a good treat. <laughs> All right. So, you guys, I'm going to flip my camera down and we're going to go to my website. The website that I have is like what I call my bread and butter for uh, my stuff, my classes and all that good stuff. Yeah. Welcome to Carrie. You guys are awesome. So, um, we're going to go to the website. Um, it's called uh, cardsbychrisb.com. So I'll flip this down. My website is here. So this is where people would go to get the clue number one. Again, this one is available, um, the clue number one, and we're going to go through all of our pieces. Under my events, <coughs> we're going to go to today, January 16th, and this is where we have the measurements listed. So I want to make sure I didn't forget anything. Um, so we have white vanilla. So when I put a W or a V, that means white and vanilla. And I would put like one piece or two pieces. And this white and vanilla is referenced here with a size next to it. And it says two by five and an eighth, which is here, this piece right here. So right now you guys, well, wait, you guys, are you ready for clue number one is what I forgot to say. <laughs> so, all right, let's try this again. And I will put a little disclaimer in you guys. I've been loving the layout of this card a lot and we have used it in class once, maybe twice in the last month. So you may recognize this layout, but I thought not everybody takes my classes and so I thought, and not everybody cuts their own card stock. You know, maybe you get my classes and you don't reproduce cards. So I thought this would still be a fun layout for you guys to do on your own with my guidance. So, so you might recognize this layout once we start going with it. All right, so back to business. <coughs> we have one piece, two and five eighths, and it is by five and an eighth. So 
the five and an eighth this way. And again, right now it doesn't matter which direction because it's just a piece of white or vanilla cardstock. And it's five and an eighth by two and five eighths. And like I say white or vanilla because I generally use white cardstock with cool colors. And I use uh, like vanilla cardstock with warm neutral colors. So you need a white or vanilla like that. And we'll put a little card over here for you guys to be distracted with to, so I don't forget to talk about that. All right, so white vanilla. All right, then we have a coordinating cardstock. And you guys, in here, it says two cardstock. So you have a one and a two. So people ask, like, well, how do you know what colors to use? So Carissa's guidance, I've always got, it was always, she's got the best advice. One of the things that Carissa does first is she picks out her designer series paper or pattern paper first and then she finds complementary cardstock colors and then she picks out her set to go with it so like this one requires two cardstock colors and for those that are new I am not really making a card I just don't like to show off the card ahead of time hi Jane Terwilliger I don't like to show off my personal card that's made because I don't want to influence anybody so I usually use copy paper and it's usually green and purple paper with white, and it's not really me making a card, but I use these pieces to give you guys guidance and support, okay? So let's go back here, and you're going to look here. We have two pieces of cardstock, one and two, and we need two pieces of both, okay? So the first one is going to help us make like the bread and butter for this card. It's your base. There's two bases, and it's all about the base. No trouble, right? So two pieces and they should be eight by five and a half. So the first piece I have here is five and a half by eight. So that's five and a half inches wide by eight inches tall. And it says on our screen here to, to score and fold at three, six, and seven on the eight inch side. So we have here, you can see, I've got my score lines already here. So three inches, six inches, and seven inches. So it says to score and fold on that. So now how do you wanna fold it though? That's the question. I'm gonna show you right now, you guys, how to, well, we'll fold, we'll make that clue number two. Is folding is clue number two. All right, so that is one piece, but you need a second piece. So this second piece is three and a quarter, three and a quarter, that way and it's eight and a half this way and then the clue says to score and fold at four and a quarter on the eight and a half inch side so you can see i've got a score line there now i'm gonna leave clue <laughs> we're gonna make our clues up on the fly you guys so you don't have to fold it at the moment but you could have it scored which is awesome so two pieces of corded like cardstock one okay that's those two pieces then we have here um, I, I see that, I think that we're missing a piece. <laughs> so I'm noticing in here, we might need you guys to cut another piece. This should probably be um, two pieces here. And it should, I'm sorry, it should be three pieces. And I'll tell you why. Three by four is one piece. So we have three by four, so three inches wide. And this is cardstock, you guys, so there's no direction at the moment. So we have three inches and then four inches. Now, that's one piece of your coordinating cardstock, too. I am pretty sure, and I should have put on here, that you need two of these. So for those that are crafting along and you already have your pieces made, you're going to want to have two. You could get by with one, but I have this card double matted on the inside. And so the second dimensions here say two and seven ace by five and three ace. So again, this is cardstock. So there's no direction at the moment, but we have five and three ace by two and seven eighths. And that's one piece. Now, you're gonna to wanna to cut a second one just because we're gonna double mat it on the inside, all right? So one mat is for the outside and one mat is for the inside. 
Okay, I hope that makes sense. Um, I noticed here now that as I was looking at it, I didn't put that second piece, but two pieces. <clears throat> then we're going to go to um, this pattern paper. Hi, Mary Ellen from Montana. Thanks for sharing. We have two pieces of patterned paper and they are not the same, but they should be complementary. Okay. So what do I mean by complementary? Okay. So this class is coming up next week. This is the, let's just stamp Dainty Delights next week, Monday. These are two different pattern papers, but they coordinate and they complement each other. Like they go together. All right. Like Ethel and Lucy. <laughs> we brought that up a lot this weekend. All right. So coordinating pattern paper, I may refer to it as designer series paper because that's Stampin' Up! lingo, but it's pattern paper that are complementary to each other. They're, they, um, they are not the same, but they work together as two pieces. Yeah, like here's another card. It's just a different theme. Like these two are two different pattern papers on the same card. All right. So this calls for two pattern papers and let's go over the sizes really quick. You guys, my stampers that were here at 4 p.m. for class, they stamped and they practiced. And so I made my um, quote unquote designer pattern paper out of their <laughs> scratch paper. <laughs> so I didn't have to cut up more, but you need two pieces, different pattern paper, or if you wanted them the same, you could make them the same too. I guess there's nothing holding you back from doing that. But the sizes that you need are seven eighths of an inch and then five and three eighths, seven eighths tall. Hi, Stacy Burns. All right. So Donna Simmer is saying it's her first time. She's already cut her pieces, but she'll assemble tomorrow. And that makes perfect sense because it's good to watch this. And then you can always assemble a little bit later. Just remember, Donna, you might want to have two of this one versus having one. And you'll see why in a little bit. All right. So again, you guys, this does make a difference. I have here that this pattern paper is seven eighths of an inch tall by five and three eighths wide. So if you have a direction to your paper, like like on this card right here, your flowers are going a certain way, you wanna make sure you have five and three eighths wide by seven eighths tall. So this is technically my patterned paper because I decorated it, but just know that it's the same color purple for as this one. So your pattern paper one is two and five eighths by five, five and an eighth. So let's flip that over and look at it. And this is important too, you guys. You want this to be wide and then the two and five eighths to be tall. All right, so five and an eighth wide by two and five eighths tall. Direction is important. You do not want to cut it so that your pattern goes this way because the card is in fact a horizontal card. All right, so there's that. That is the, um, the last cut actual piece. On clue one, we also list here scraps of paper and stamps. So scraps of paper can be in like your coordinating cardstock colors. They could be in your like white vanilla. You can have designer or pattern paper, but you need some scraps uh, to decorate the front. And then stamps would be focal images and sentiments of varying sizes, bringing your coordinating inks, colored pencils, ribbon, thread, embellishments, scissors, adhesives of choice. All right, Jody Storman is in the house. She almost forgot. And Jody, we just got started. We just finished going through clue number one. So we're gonna go to clue number two, but. Before we do that, I wanna make sure everybody's on board and you're good with everything that was in clue number one. Uh, yeah, so Donna Simmer um, is from Canada, you guys, uh, and she's been watching for a little while. Uh, and she, I'm so excited though, you've never done mystery card night and now you've gotten your paper cut and that's awesome. It takes, you know, sometimes it takes a little bit of, you know, you know seeing something before you try it, right? So I'm, I can't wait to see your card, Donna. All right, you guys, so are you ready for clue number two? Meaning I'm gonna make up the next clue as we go. I think I've got like an idea of what it's gonna be. So what I need from you guys is give me that thumbs up, give me some hearts, give me some love emojis, <laughs> and we will move on to clue number two. 
So like basically, oh, I got a thumbs up already from Christina. Yay. Okay. So basically at this point, everybody should just have their papers ready. We added on one little piece of paper, the same size as the other one, just to have for an inside mat. All right. I'm seeing them come through. All right. So without further ado, you guys, we're going to moosey on over to clue number two. All right. So let's flip this back down and let's work with this over here first. Clue number one, you guys. We have these two pieces of coordinating cardstock one. Hi, Kim Bar. All right. The scoring is important. We've got it scored. Now let's fold it appropriately. So we have a score line here at three. Okay. On the three inch score, I'm just going to take it and I'm going to fold it down like this. And make sure you grab your bone folder. Mine are all over on the table over there for my private class, but I'm gonna grab my ruler and I'm gonna burnish the edge here. All right, so we've got here one fold like this. Okay, so we're making a mountain. And now what happens is we're gonna make a valley and another mountain. So at the six inch score line, you should be able to take this and fold it up. And then you're gonna take it at the seven inch score line and fold it down. And if you've scored it pretty straight, <laughs> you should be good. <laughs> All right, so you've got here, now take your bone folder or whatever object you want to use to burnish, and we're gonna burnish it. This is what it should look like, guys. So it's actually gonna stand up like this, okay? And that's what it looks like from the side. So in case you, you know, so clue one had to fold it, but you might not have known how to fold it. So you definitely want the mountain, a valley, and then a mountain. Isn't it funny? The mountain starts with an M and it looks like that. And a valley looks like a V and it looks like that. And then we've got another mountain. Ha ha ha. So, all right. Then in conjunction with this folding, we're also going to fold this piece. So this was our three and a quarter by eight and a half. And we're going to score it. I mean, sorry fold it at the score line, which is four and a quarter, like this, and then we can burnish it, which with whatever you want. <laughs> I have three bone folders. They're all about 20 feet away from me, <laughs> sitting over on the table. <laughs> I think a ruler works just fine for tonight. All right, so that would be your clue number two. You guys, I'm going to have to start paying attention to what clue we're on, though, because... <laughs> that was one and now we're on two and so if you guys are good with the folding of this card make sure you give me a thumbs up and I'll watch for the thumbs up so that I know that we can move on to the next clue the next clue is going to be a little bit of getting glue happy so all right I think that will be good and you guys, just for a reminder, you should just have folded your paper. So it's not that crazy of a clue. Hi, Julie Bierschbach. All right. When I just get, okay, Betty Pyle. I got a thumbs up from Betty Pyle. All right, Shirley's good to go. Kim's good. All right. We are going to move on to clue number three. So let's flip this down. And we're going to write down number three here. So you guys, this would be technically clue number three. Clue number three is going to be getting a little glue happy. We have a piece of designer series or pattern paper that is seven eighths by five and three eighths. And we have a piece of pattern paper that is five and an eighth by two and five eighths. And then we have one of our, so there's two mats that are the same size. And one is here, the, it's five and three eighths by two and seven eighths. So your clue number three is to get a little glue happy. And what we're gonna do is, this is pattern paper, you guys. Remember my pattern paper? It was from my class at four o'clock and everybody scribbled, it says sending love during this season of growth all over and thank you for your kindness. Okay, what you're gonna do for your clue number three is you're going to glue, this is pattern paper. You're gonna glue the patterned paper to your cardstock mat here. So this is your cardstock two. And what you're doing is putting a mat around your pattern paper. All right. Now I, 
I thought about this. I'm like, oh man, are you guys going to get confused that my pattern paper base is the same size as my 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 paper here? And I'm like, oh, you'll 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 get it. I'm going to sneeze. Hang on. I think I'm <coughs> Woo! Okay. Sorry about that. Uh, I felt that one coming on so I could prepare <laughs> and not talk <laughs> while I was sneezing. All right. So just a reminder, you guys, my pattern paper is this piece and my colored cardstock is the bottom piece. All right. So your clue three is to let's glue these two pieces together. And then what we're going to do is further adhere this uh, coordinating pattern paper. You're going to glue that and you're going to glue this layer. Now it's going to go on to your card base. So you guys, this is your card base right here. And this layer fits really nicely, right? Thank you so much, Marsha Long. Thanks, <laughs> Lors. <laughs> Thanks, Debbie. Thanks, Julie. <laughs> Thanks, Mary. Oh, man. That was a tickly nose there. All right. So, you guys, this layer. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> Hi, Wendy. Thanks for finding me. All right. So, you guys, the designer paper or pattern paper layers onto your cardstock, too, which gets layered onto this panel. So this is the panel here of your cardstock one. <laughs> Thanks everybody. And then you have your seven eighths inch pattern paper. That is going to go onto this front panel right here, right? That should fit really nicely right there. You know, you don't have a lot of, I mean, you have wiggle room because you're using, I use liquid glue, right? But you have a very small border. You have a 16th of an inch border around this perimeter and then this perimeter. So that is what I have for you guys for clue number three is let's glue these layers together. You guys, again, don't laugh at my designer paper or my pattern paper. I made it from scratch. It is homemade. <laughs> All right. So when you guys are done gluing your pattern paper to your cardstock two and then further adhering it to the panel here of cardstock one and adhering your strip of pattern paper to the front here, then you are ready to give me a thumbs up and make sure you do that so I can watch for it. And then what we'll do is we will keep moving on to the other parts of our card here. I think some of you, when you start to see this, pulling it together. You're going to be like, oh yeah, I remember she just did a card. And maybe you guys don't. Maybe I think you do because I, <laughs> maybe you don't remember, but all right. I see Betty's ready and Deb Norman is ready. All right. I see Jessica Brooks is ready. Okay. So I've got a few people rocking and rolling that they're ready to go. Um, we are going to, so that was clue number three, you guys. I'm going to write it down. Hi, Mary. Oh, there's Mary Hartman's ready too. Yay. All right. Clue number four is what we're going to do next. Are you excited for it? I am. <laughs> All right. We have now this piece right here. This is, <laughs> thanks Mary Lemke. This is your eight and a half by three and a quarter scored at four and a quarter. And your clue number four is you guys, we are going to adhere this on here to make it look like this. How should you do this? For me, the easiest way to do this was you don't want to put, so there's a little bit of wiggle room. Yes, Dawn remembers this layout. Isn't it an awesome layout? Oh my goodness, I love this layout so much. You want to put glue, in essence, underneath this section right here, right? So what you can do, you have two options. You can either put your glue here or you can put it here. And I guess either one's a horse apiece, but you don't want to risk putting glue in this open area right here. So I was just going to put a little bit of glue right there. So the glue is here. And what you're going to do is, you know what, the other thing you might do is just put a little bit of glue really close to the edge there. And you're going to center this now between my fingers here, like between my thumb and my finger, you're going to center that. And you just want it flush at the bottom. All right. So you see that I'm trying to make this flush here. You've got it glued. You want to make sure no glue goes right here because it will not open so good then. Oh, Deb loves the layout. Hildy loves it. Okay, you guys, some of you are remembering the layout. And that's okay, you guys. I thought that this is good practice for you guys to cut your own cardstock for this layout. All right, so you've got that glued here. Now, what's going to happen is that is going to fold over. 
and we need to, part of clue four is gluing this now. And you don't wanna put any glue in this middle area because that's not good. So we're going to put a little line of liquid glue here and we can put a little line of liquid glue there. And if you're just wanting to, you could just put it near the corners there so that you don't make sure you make sure you don't go over the edge. All right, what you're gonna do is just line this, lay this flat, you know, as flat as you can, and you're just gonna flip this over onto this side. Uh, hopefully, you're flush on this side. If you're a little short, it's okay. Um, if you're a little long, you're gonna be able to trim it with your scissors. So this is still on clue four, you guys. Uh, Patsy loves this layout too. Yeah, you guys, I'm, I just, I'm so happy you love this layout. It's another excuse to make this card with this layout, yay. All right, so you guys, I, I usually rub my fingers over it because the heat of your fingers helps the uh, adhesive bond, the, like the papers bond together. And so if you would have yours a little too long, all you need to do is take your scissors and you would just trim it like that a little shorter. If it's a hair too short, it's okay. It's the back of the card and you will just see a little ridge there. It's no big deal. But clue number four is basically adhering this panel onto your card. And so what's it's making a card front for you. And what's really awesome is you guys will be able to see your designer series paper all the way through here. And you see the little strip of designer. Now, if you wanted to be a paper conservationist, you could have just cut the designer paper to be this long and this long, and then there wouldn't be any in the middle underneath here, your call. If you wanna make more of this card in the future, you would really need only like a one and a half inch section here. So like seven eighths by one and a half and seven eighths by one and a half, and then you wouldn't be wasting any designer paper underneath there. So just thought of that now. All right, so that was clue number four. Four. So when you're done with that gluing, I'm seeing Betty's already good to go. Christina's good to go. Deb's probably good. <clears throat> Luann's done. I will mosey on and let's think about what we're going to do for clue number five. Okay. All right. I got an idea what clue number five is. So we're going to mark it right now. So I don't forget. <laughs> How are you liking this flying by the seat of your pants, you guys? <laughs> It's making me think ahead what the next step is going to be. So numero cinco, that is our next clue, you guys, number five. So let's mosey over to number five. Uh, clue number five, you have another um, piece of paper here. This is colored cardstock number two. So it should coordinate, right? So if your pattern paper is navy and pink and blue, you might have like a navy base and pink for your cardstock too. So this piece right here, which is three by four. Now here's optional. Calling out an optional part of this clue, you guys. So if you want to, optional, emboss this with an embossing folder. I like to throw that in there every now and then. This piece would be great embossed. Um, add a little, um, or background stamp. You could do something to this to make it um, prettier. Uh, giving it some raised in, like height to it, you know, put a pattern to mel it, anything. Once you've done that, if you want to do that, um, how tight is your clue for last part to glue to the back? Um, how tight is the clue for last part glued to the back? So I, for the last clue, it's glued up to the top right here, Lisa. So let's see if I get the angle right. It's glued pretty much up to the top here and I had it flush here. So this, we glued this first part on and you went that way and then the other part should just fit right here. So hopefully that answers your question. I'm, I'm not sure if that's what you meant by how tight is glue for last part glued to the back. I mean, it's glued to the back. Your three by four, you guys, if you look here, it fits right inside this front panel now. So this front panel is three and a quarter by four and a quarter. And so our colored cardstock here is three by four. Embossed it. Hey, if you want to emboss it, let's emboss it. Look at this. This is the easiest way you can emboss pieces of paper. <laughs> uh, oh, I'm glad you got it, Lisa. Perfect. So uh, there, I just gave it the all natural um, paper folding embossing technique here. So now I've got this cool, warm weather look to it, you guys. 
and that's what you could put if you want to emboss it. So once, so your clue number five is optional embossing or background stamp, decorate it um, with some ink if you want. But once you've got it to the point you're ready, you can take some glue and you're going to adhere that to the front of your panel here. And so that will go here. Get that glued centered top to bottom, left to right. Oh, and I glued it upside down. Oh man, but thank goodness I used liquid glue because look at this. I can take it off and put it on again. Ha ha ha. That's what I love about liquid glue, you guys. I've got wiggle room. All right, so you've got that on here. And now I have some thumbs ups coming in. Our clue number six. <laughs> I think if you're ready, we'll go on to clue number six. Okay, I see some thumbs up scrolling in. So again, if you're new to me and this is your first time and I'm moving a little faster than you're operating, don't worry. Um, watch along and you're going to get a general idea of how to do the card and you can always make your card later like um, Donna Simmer is making her card tomorrow but she's watching along so then when she goes to make it she knows what to do all right you guys this is clue number six coming to you live from the hive all right let's flip down <clears throat> so we're going to talk about these last two pieces here we have another if you cut a second one five and three eighths by two and seven eighths and then that is your colored cardstock. So it should be the same color as here as this bottom layer. And then we have a whiter vanilla left that's five and an eighth by two and five eighths. If you didn't notice it, guys, this lines up here and is a mat. Okay. If you don't cut this piece, like let's say you're like, I don't want to cut another piece. I'm good. You could use this piece by itself and not up, um, not adhere it. So what I need for you guys to do, because ultimately your clue number six is you want to stamp focal images and sentiments in coordinating inks on your white vanilla piece. And then if you hint, don't like the way you stamp it, flip it over and stamp the back because you get two shots, right? There's two sides to the paper. And then what you want to do is adhere it from here, you know, adhere these two layers together, and then we're going to further adhere it to the inside of your card like that. So let's write a little sentiment on the inside. There you go. So this is pretend I'm stamping. I stamped with my coordinating inks. <laughs> All right. So stamping's done, got a focal image in there. What we can do, you guys, is adhere your white vanilla mat to your coordinating cardstock mat here, just like this. What is the third size of the third piece? It's the same as the second one, Sarah. <clears throat> So Sarah, if you go to the clue here, I failed to write down three pieces. And so you should have a second one that is two and seven eighths by five and three eighths. There's a, just a second one and it's the same as the first one, okay? So it's right here, two and seven eighths by five and three eighths. It's the same size as the mat that goes on the front. And what we're gonna do is adhere our white vanilla to it. And hopefully that answered your question. I'm thinking that's what you meant by the third piece. <clears throat> then this, the little adhesive on here, this gets glued onto our inside. Now, if you didn't want that third piece, you guys, you could just put your white piece right in the inside and that's quite all right. And again, you'll have a small little 16th of an inch margin all the way around the edge on the inside. And then you have a little bit bigger margin to see your coordinating cardstock. okay? So, all right. That, you guys, that is your clue six. So it's bringing in some stamps, focal images for your inside. 
hopefully you have a thought of what you're going to do on the outside because we're going to we're going to Clue number seven is all about what's left, which is right here. Okay, so you have your inside ready to go. Um, you have it stamped with coordinating inks, focal sentiments, or focal images and sentiments, and then gluing it. So as you guys are done with that inside part, make sure you let me know. A batty pile, you are like right on every clue. You're ready, you're ready to go always. I love it. All right, Randy's good to go. Luann Johnson is good to go. So again, you guys, this, the last two pieces, if you cut your second mat for the inside here, the last two pieces here are what goes on the inside. Gwen Simmons is ready to go. Yay, I love it. Okay, so that means that we're gonna write number seven here and we're gonna move on to clue number seven. And clue number seven, you guys, you know, I helped you get to uh, the core of your card. Your base should be set. Your mat should be set. But now it's naked on the front. <laughs> it's like it needs help. So your clue number seven, if you're ready for clue number seven, is to work on the outside of your card now. So let's flip the camera down and let's talk about it. <laughs> so what do you want to put on the front? Okay. So you have in your possession, hopefully some scraps of your cardstock, your cardstock one, you should have some whiter vanilla scraps, you should have this, you know, some cardstock two scraps. What do you want to put on the outside of your card? Look at this. If you're looking at this card, okay, so Jenna, oh, okay, so gotta like let you in on a little side topic about where these cards are coming from. So Jennifer Merle Hampshire helps me with my escape. She does four creative presentations, one each day. She comes up Wednesday night and she leaves Sunday night. You guys, she got home at 1230 this morning. So like she left at eight and she got home at 1230. So it was about four hours at home and she stays the entire like four days. And we've, we've been doing this for a few years now. And she's, she and I have never stamped together. Usually we're so beat and exhausted by the end of the night that we just are ready for bed or we chat a little bit and we go to bed. We've never stamped together. So on Saturday, we stamped together and we designed four cards together for a class. She's going to offer the class to her customers and I'm offering the class to my customers. And so that's where these cards come in. So this is an upcoming class and it will be held in March and it has to do with celebration product. It's the host set that you can get during celebration. Um, so, uh, Oh, Christina says it's 2.55 a.m. Yes, this last clue you're going to work on next time. And I'm, gonna, I'm leading up to this last clue, you guys. So these cards that I'm going to show you are for a class, which you'll be hearing more about in the near future um, because, yeah, another class. But here's what I want to talk about. Your clue number seven is decorating the front. What do you want to do to your front? This is a stamp from that Scenic Garden set, which is the host set, and it's watercolored with an aqua painter and then it's matted and then there's ribbon wrapped around it and tied. Okay, something like that would be amazing on the front using scraps like that. Well, here's another card. You could just take a little label and add a little butterfly to it. You know, it just depends. How, you wanna add a little bit more designer paper or pattern paper and put that on the front. Here's another one. This is some of that dainty, all this is the Dainty Delight paper. This little guy, you could, it's a little bit big for that, but you could always cut part of it and put that on there and having a card to say hello and then cut it off right there and put that on there. And then look, there's even another one. This chair could get, you know, it's a little big for that, but here's another example of a label that you could die cut. So depending, so all these cards are for the scenic garden class that's gonna be set for March. But um, here's another thing. You could stamp something like this and put a little sentiment and put that on here. Mm, the only thing that I just thought of that maybe you might not want to, thanks Gwen Simmons, we'll talk to you later. The one thing you might have wanted to do is put some ribbon behind here. So for those that are watching and putting your cards together later, you might consider wrapping your ribbon. So this would have been my hint on this clue. I don't remember what clue it was, but you could wrap some ribbon on, around here before you put that layer on because then something like this would look super cool and pretty in the front of that, right? Okay, here's another one. This is for a class coming up on Thursday night. Here's an ice cream cone. You could just take this tag and the ice cream cone and then that could go on the front, all right? 
Lots of different options. Here's a pretty flower from Beautifully Happy. This little thing, could, like that flower, could fit there with that tag. So, you guys, this is where you guys need to take the rest of this card. Oh, look, here's the bird card. Even that, like, this is a class that's coming up. That bird could get put there with that frame, and that would fit perfectly in that spot. You guys, bird, 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 bird is the word. There's lots of options. So, think about it. Like this part now is I've got you up to the point where your card is like it's the core is done. You need to put your creative flair and your ideas into finishing it off. Do you want to cut pieces? Do you want to stamp some vocal images? Do you want to die cut them? Do you want to fussy cut them? What do you want to do? So I just showed you about five different things that I have just from sitting on the right that are about the size that are three or four by less that you could put on to a card. All right, tags, labels, flowers, ice cream cones, whatever you want. Oh my, all right? Um, so your, your clue number seven is decorate the front of your card however you want to. You know, make it happen. Get something out, get you know, and hopefully it's all cohesive and you had some stamps that will fit in there. Um, and that would be your clue number seven. Now, I know that that's like a loaded clue right there, right? <laughs> There's a lot that goes into it. And I know that that is probably a lot for people to like finish right now in this minute. And um, I'm going to go to clue eight, not waiting for anybody to tell me that they're ready because I'm thinking that they're not ready. But it's okay because I'm leading you off with a really awesome last clue. Clue number eight is my favorite of all clues. And that clue is actually, let's write it down here, you guys, so you can see it. Clue number eight is, I'm going to just read it to you. Stella and embellish to your heart's content, right? So get that bling on there, get that Stella on there, add a little anything, add the ribbon, figure out like where are you gonna add your ribbon, embellish and Stella to your heart's content. That's always the last clue. Oh, thanks, Marsha Long. Um, it's a mystery as to what we'll do. You're right, Judy, exactly. And that leads me up to the last thing that I actually have the graphic for. Oh my, look at this, you guys. I saved this one, <laughs> so I really do have this. So what does it mean now? Because Judy just said, now it's a mystery to what you're doing. Well, I want to see what you're going to make. Show me what you're making. And those that post a photo of your creation in the comments of the event in a specific post will be entered to win a prize. And so... Kelly will um, grab, so Kelly's my gal that helps me with my paper pumpkins, and you guys see her for Technique Thursdays. She's my marketing arm. Um, she's my cousin, and she's the amazing family. Uh, she helps me out, and so she will pull anybody who posted a picture um, by Wednesday night. She'll give me a list, and we'll do a drawing on Wednesday, Thursday night. Now, what do I mean by this? Time to share a photo. So where do you share it? This is always the question I get. People can't find it. What you need to do is in Facebook. So yes, we are live right now in YouTube, but I still use Facebook very much for my business. And that's where we post and share. I create events. And so you still find things in Facebook. So I'm going to show you in Facebook where you can find it. And also I will be creating an email that goes out to my community of people who get my emails. Um, with I actually share the link in there. So if you're not getting emails from me and you want to, I'm going to flip the screen down. You want to go to my website and subscribe to get emails from me. All right, so we are going to go to Cards by Christine, and I'm going to switch over here. I got two different, I got to go Cards by Christine or Christine Bertram. I got to go to Cards by Christine. And when you go into my Cards by Christine page, and I believe it's under About, that's where I find my events, you guys. So... You click on about, I think down here are events. So let's click on events and it's under past events because it already passed you guys. So go to past events and if you click on the discussion, it has it right here. I scheduled it for 7.50 p.m. It says, we hope you had a great time solving the mystery with us tonight. Show off your beautiful creations here and be inspired, inspired by everyone's cards. Comment in this thread by January 18th at 11 p.m. and you'll be entered to win prizes. And that's where it is. So two people already like that. So that's awesome. So what you would do is come in here and comment. And then what you need to do is go through your pictures 
And look at that. There I have Miss Jeannie Parker and Shauna Burns. Now, pretend that this is a card, right? And you would post your card. But I had Jeannie Parker and Shauna Burns come from Michigan for my event. They drove down Saturday and they drove back today. Um, so that was awesome. So I'm not going to post the picture of us there. But that's where you would click on your camera, post your picture, and boom, that's it. And we cannot wait to see all the inspiration and ideas and creativity that you guys have. So the post is on Facebook, Mary Sykes. Yes. Um, so Debbie, so do the cards get posted on Facebook or YouTube? <laughs> Debbie, yes. Facebook. I just said it, I think, three times. <laughs> you guys are funny. I love it. So yes, Facebook is where you're posting it. I don't do much posting in YouTube. I do my videos in YouTube because... People have been telling me how awesome it is to watch YouTube videos and how easy it is to use. And actually, you don't have to have like, YouTube is open to everybody. It's not like we're Facebook, you have to have an account. So, all right, now to create a card. Lovely layout, says Marie Stewart. Yay, yes, you guys. So this may not be a new layout because you may have seen this in my class or other demonstrators use this layout. But I thought, you know what, let's get you guys doing this layout and making them yourself. And if you've made it before, then it's it should be really easy peasy lemon squeezy for you. So hi, Denise Paolo. I'm so happy that you um, liked it and had fun. Yay. I mean, I wanted to see if anybody had posted a picture already because sometimes by right now, there's already pictures that are in here and I could have shared that with you. Hi, Lynn Sanders. Can't wait to see all the creativity. Yes, me too. All right. So I did tell you guys that I would take my camera off and show you all the boxes. You guys, out of 96 people, hi Trinket, try 96 people, 40 people did the online version of the event. I, let, me set, let me do some math here because I had... I think, oh, come on, 96 minus 53 is 43. Oh, and then I had some pickups. Okay, that makes sense. So a couple of people picked up their boxes. So 96 people, my mom had 53 people that came through between Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday that my mom fed. We had chicken salad sandwiches and chicken noodle soup with homegrown chicken that comes from my parents' farm. And then she made lasagna for dinner and roasted vegetables. She made a different... Um, a different dessert every night. She had chocolate eclair tort, pistachio tort. So my mom did all the cooking. And so we had 53 people, but then there are, I think 41 boxes here that we're gonna mail out. And I thought I'd just show you a little bit what's going on. Um, so these, there was no mail today, you guys. So uh, US Postal Service was closed. And so no mailings going out today, but we got the, we had Carmen help me until 9.30. Tammy Sikolik helped me yesterday too, you guys, like with the boxes. I just, the team was awesome for like tearing down everything, but do um, Tammy and Carmen and I filled up all your boxes. They're ready to go. My mom will help me tomorrow morning. Um, we're going to put bubble wrap in them and then get them ready to go. And I'll drop them off at the post office tomorrow afternoon, probably. Um, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Latokia. That is my my plan. I am like, I'm very hopeful <laughs> that that fire and um, uh, relaxing. So, all right, you guys, I'm going to unplug this. We're going to flip the camera around. Hang on like this. I'm going to show you guys your boxes. All right. So, all right. Look at that. I've got them all lined up here. <laughs> so look at that. All. And there's one up there that we even had to move that one to a bigger box because Maria, you had so many swap groups that you participated in. So look at, there we got all that lined up. Yeah, all that's ready to go. And some people had classes that I could add to the boxes. This is what we worked on today. We got those. That is basically um, 50 times four uh, cards kitted up for the country floral. And then over here, <laughs> the boxes go all the way. And that's all that black bag is full of bubble wrap, you guys. So we've got that ready on standby. And there's, like, look at all those boxes. Everybody's names, look at that. Isn't that awesome? Got your name in there. We got your cookies in there. We got your lantern. We got your snack mix. Some people won prizes. I love it. And my mom's spritz cookies are in the little flower container. So yay. Awesome. Whew, okay. You guys, I have lots of swap cards here to show you too. This box right here is full of swap cards that I got to show you during a showcase. And then over here, shut your eyes. I'm going fast. I have all of these too. These were all the different, I had a shoebox swap, a Tyler inspired swap. Look at that, that's Diane Bogenhagen's card. Uh, she took first place in Tyler's book. And then I had um, 
different swaps. So I have a swap card showcase. Let's see here if I flip this back. So I, um, I've got a few things. I got to get the camera back here. Got a few things on the docket for you guys coming up. So for those that are wondering, I, I, in my head, I had it in my head that I was going to do uh, the guessing game challenge that you guys, I had 14 questions at the end of the year. I have them ready. I have all the questions right here. They're all ready. And I got all the answers and I got all the, like, the winners. So um, <laughs> I just got to go through it with you guys. So not tomorrow, but probably Wednesday is my radar. Um, I will be going through all those 14 questions and the answers and, and declaring the winners. And also the... Um, the bingo boards, and then I had top fan, the monthly creative challenge, and the class card challenge. I will plan to be going through all that, and then I'll have a different time set up for the swap card. Um, but as long as I have some of you guys, before you, you hang up with me, I do have, um, <laughs> thanks Marcia, um, I do have a list of names I want to go over. So if you're watching me yet, and you had it in your scavenger hunt, so the scavenger hunt, you guys, goes till January 31st. It's out on my website if you want to partake of it. It's not ever meant to stress, cause you stress or undue hardship. It's only meant for you to see things in the catalog that you may have missed or overlooked. And so I did, I've been getting scavenger hunts. So I'm going to call off, I'm going to do a list of names of who I've gotten scavenger hunts from. And if I listed your name, great. And if I didn't, then reach out to me because I may have missed it. And um, I just want to make sure I get it printed. All right, so Jennifer Jones, Susan Bellamy, Susan Warmly, Kathy Jackson, I've got Sherry Stewart, Christina Bernard, Deb Norman, Debbie Schultz from Florida, not, not Debbie Schultz, Debbie Schultz, I got Judy Sharp, Millie Kendall, Pamela Leahy, Pat Detlefson, and Stacey Burns. So those are who I have you know, because I don't print here, you guys. My printer is horrible and it's always out of ink and it just doesn't get printed. So I take my stuff to the printer. My gal prints it for me. And so I always got to forward her the document. So um, if you guys mail them to me, that's amazing. I love it. And if you send it to me, um, I send it on and that's still good. Um, but I just, sometimes things get lost in trans translation, right? So, uh, so if you did send in your scavenger hunt and your name wasn't part of that list, then please let me know. So I was hoping that I'd catch some of you guys still watching. All right. Oh, do on face. He posted a few on Facebook and one special for Christine too. Yay. All right. I got here late, Gwen said, but I'll catch you later. Hi, Gwen Petrashek. Gwen, I have, um, uh, just so you know, I have something on the, the counter in the mudroom for you. You won one of the swap card prizes from yesterday. Yay. I don't know if you saw that. <laughs> awesome. So, all right, you guys, I think we made it through everything that we needed to do. I hope you enjoyed the, the January mystery card making night with me, with my ad hoc fly by the seat of my pants clues. <laughs> I will tell you, it probably saved me an hour and a half of time today, um, not writing them and not printing them. But I appreciate you guys uh, working with me, not having clues. I know that it's nice to have the printed out so that you can actually read it. So, all right. Oh, Latokia needs to send hers. Yes, you guys get those scavenger hunts in. They are due to me January 31st, and I plan to grade them right after the month starts, like right after February starts. So, all right. I think that's it. I was just reading any comments over there. All right, relax now. <laughs> yes, mom. <laughs> Thanks, Anne. I appreciate that. All right, you guys, lots of sunshine, love, and hugs to you. We'll 